Hi again guys and welcome to a brand new tuning series called Dirt Masters Unplugged. I had the idea for this series today. It's only going to be a relatively short series. I don't have a particular number of episodes in mind, but it's not going to be a particularly long amount of episodes. And basically the idea of the series is as a fusion of the Dirt Masters review series and my special projects replica series. So the layout and format is kind of a combination of the two put together. And basically the concept of the series is why use their rally cars when you can build your own. So in this series I'll be taking cars which are typically not used for rallying and turning them into completely purpose-built and surprisingly dominant rally machines. So for this inaugural episode, as you can see, our first rally build is based on the lowest grade Nissan R35 GTR. This is a 78,000 credit car, so it's significantly cheaper than many of the other rally cars in the game. And the spec that I've built it to is to kind of a Pikes Peak specification. I call it the R35T Pikes Peak Special. It has exactly 800 horsepower and sits at just under 1,400 kilos. So it's got 300 horsepower less than, the, than a fully tuned Escudo and weighs almost twice as much. But despite this, it is almost four seconds quicker around the Nordvard G rally circuit, which is the rally circuit that we feature in the Dirt Masters review series, than the Escudo. Almost four seconds quicker than that purpose-built and legendary car. So, a serious rally machine. Now, in the spirit of the special project's layout, I will first show you what visual settings I've done to set up the look of the car, and then we'll go over to the track for the more technical and mechanical setup of how to make this car a dirt beast. So, first of all, for the visual modifications of this Rally Spec GTR. We've gone for the Type B body kit. You don't have to do any of these. This is just the look that I wanted. Uh, now this adds some little lips, a chin splitter, side skirts, that kind of thing. And I've opted to go for the coloured version rather than the carbon one. We fitted the flat floor to increase downforce and also to increase the PP. For the rear wing, we've gone for the special type A wing because it just has a good look to it I think. I considered going for a large custom wing but this particular one I think just looks better really. For the rims, the rims are actually stock on this model because obviously we fitted it with dirt tyres and when you fit it with dirt tyres the game automatically fits it with dirt rims as well so I haven't actually fitted any particular rims to it. For the meters in this car, we fitted a boost meter, a rev counter, and a speedo. Obviously, just fit whichever ones you need for the car. And for the color, when the game finally decides to save, for the color, we have gone for metallic. And the particular color we've gone for, as you can see, has kind of this bluish tinge to it. It's called Melanit Schwartz. And it comes from the Mercedes E55 AMG. It's a pretty sweet looking colour, I think. So that's the colour I've gone for there. Obviously, I haven't painted the wheels because they're stock. I haven't painted the brakes either. And neither can you paint this particular wing. So that's it for the visual tuning of this car. Now let's go over to the setup garage to see what mechanical setups we've got on it. So we have dirt tyres currently fitted on this one. Obviously, fit snow or race or whatever you need. For suspension, we've increased the ride height as high as it can go, not surprisingly. Springs we've equaled out to 10 front and rear. Dampers and anti-roll to 4. We've got no camber at all on this one and no toe because you just don't need it for a rally car. For the gearbox, obviously this isn't a top speed tune and you want brutal acceleration. So we've got a relatively low auto setting of 180, and then we've just rounded off the gears to 3.9, 2665, 1965, 
1500, 1220 and 1015 with a final drive of 3.5. For the diff we've got the highest initial torque for that explosive acceleration out of corners, high acceleration and low braking sensitivity. We've got a torque split of 4060 as you can see. For the power we've got the stage 3 engine tune and the high RPM turbo and then restricted the power down to 97%. This also has an oil change so obviously that makes a difference as to where you'll need to set the percentage whether or not you've done an oil change. We've got the maximum downforce on the custom wing and obviously you want the full weight loss package. In terms of weight distribution this car's already pretty well set up so I haven't adjusted anything there. So that's it for the mechanical side of things. As you can see it sits at just over 650 pp but pp doesn't matter so much in rallying. So that's it for the technical setup of the car. Now let's go to the track and see what it can do. As I said at the start of the video, this car is actually quicker around this circuit than the Suzuki Escudo, which really shocked me to be honest. I expected it to be quick, because obviously I made it to be Pikes Peak spec, but I wasn't expecting it to be that quick, mainly due to how heavy the car still is. But as you can see, it's blisteringly quick around this dirt track. Now, I haven't tested it on a snow track, but I think it should probably be pretty good because it feels amazingly good, far better to be honest, than I ever expected it to be when I first made this tune. The handling is more, I would say, pro level. It does handle well, but uh, the handling is more pro level. and It takes a couple of laps to get a feel for the way the car behaves. I find using the handbrake quite a lot to enter, say, hairpins is very good. And the, the sheer power of the car is just so overwhelming that you, you get great laps over and over again, even if you make little mistakes here and there. But, I mean, overall, you can't argue with four seconds quicker than the Escudo, especially when the Escudo weighs almost half as much and has 300 horsepower more. So overall, I'm very pleased with this tune, and I hope you guys enjoy using it if you do decide to fit this to one of your GTRs. So that's it for this setup. Not sure exactly when I'll see you guys for the next one, because this is kind of going to be a, a bit of an ad-lib series. I'll just drop them here and there. So, but uh, I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoy the tune, and as always, thanks for watching.